Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna to make another prop from Dragon Ball Z. It's Super Saiyan hair. I'm gonna make hair from foam, of course, and I'm gonna need a form-fitting cap to wear it. This is the under helmet pattern that I made for my Red Guardian helmet. I have used this pattern in a few other builds, but I can use it again with some more four millimeter foam that I got from TNT Cosplay. I use my heat gun and a planishing stake to curl all the foam pieces and then I use contact cement to glue the foam together. First, I close all the darts in each panel. This also creates a curve on each piece, but having them heated into a curve beforehand helps. I glue the sides together, following the letters on each seam, and I didn't use all the parts from the pattern, so it's very important for me to follow the registration marks on the sides, because if I start at the wrong point, the helmet probably won't fit. Gluing the two halves together is the toughest part, but that last middle seam pulls the helmet into shape. So now I've got my basic skull cap. Yep, there we go, still fits, good. My head hasn't gotten any bigger. Off of this, I can actually start making the hair. The hair that I have is from a Pepakura file. Brought it into Armorsmith Designer, scaled it to, to fit my head, because I can adjust the avatar within Armorsmith to be my sizes, my dimensions. And once I got the scale that I wanted, I could print out the pattern that I wanted. The pattern is 16 pages of, of parts, you know, because the hair for Vegeta is asymmetrical, right? He doesn't have a, a block of hair with an equal side block of hair. No, it's all asymmetrical. Every block of hair is an individual spike or block of hair, and, and that's it. So. I actually need to make each one individually. Uh, still not that big of a deal, but it's kind of fun to think that I've got 43 pattern pieces to cut out, trace onto some four millimeter foam, and cut out 43 parts. Then I can start gluing. I start cutting out all of the pattern pieces. These have a lot of darts. Uh, a dart are those little triangle openings inside of a single piece. And when you glue them together, it pulls a flat piece into a three-dimensional shape. Each flat pattern needs to fold up into a spike. One thing I did was add a page number onto each pattern piece. I can look at the pattern in Armorsmith Designer. I can find the piece on its page and click on it and I can see where it is in the final build. Having the page number written down on each part made finding the pieces on screen much easier. There's the occasional ones where the line is so close it can't even have paper in between the line marks. I'm not bothering to cut those. Not when the entire thing is like that, right? When it goes to a point, I go down to the point, but there's been a few of them that, yeah, if it was paper, I would have to make a cut, but uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Fomal squish. <laughs> I found a setting that I missed before where Armorsmith will make registration marks. So I start popping out the marks with my pattern notcher. This is Joe from the Gundam build. He wanted to help out, so he's gonna start tracing the pattern pieces onto the four millimeter foam. When I finished cutting the registration marks, I also started tracing pattern pieces and the page numbers were copied onto the foam as well. It's interesting to me that that's all I needed to cover my head. Everything else is hair. <laughs> all right. Want to help me cut off some foam, please? Nope. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing to do is cut the foam into a smaller, workable size. Because so many of these pieces need to fold up into a spike, I wanted to use my Dremel router setup to cut V grooves where the file wanted the folds to be. I can get a sharper tip on each spike if there's less foam getting folded into it. And routing the V grooves before cutting the parts out was a good idea. So many of these have triangle points. If they were already cut apart and separate, it'd be really easy to overcut on the router or have them pull up inside and just get torn up and destroyed. And I was routing on a full sheet of foam and not a bunch of individual pieces. That way, there was as much support for the router base as I could get. You can see it when cutting the parts out. The V grooves continued right to the ends and they were very clean. Joe had finished cutting the parts he had and then started assembly. Putting the parts together was not as simple as it would seem. 
We checked the computer constantly for part orientation and how everything fit together. Most of the hair spikes were one piece and self-contained. Some were not. One other small challenge was that all the patterns for the pieces were reversed, so all the lines marked on the foam would go inside of each assembled piece. I needed to do this for making the V grooves. There would have been no other way to make those cuts. We just needed to remember that the pattern was reverse, which was extra fun while looking at the hair model on the computer. Working on this one. Or did we already do that one? No, we did that one. Yeah, we did that one. Once all the spikes were made, the next challenge was how to assemble it all. Joe was excited about how it would fit and started to tape the pieces together. Oh yeah, that fits. This seemed like a really good idea to me. We'd be able to see if all the parts were here, if one pattern piece fell off the table and got missed. <laughs> Is it a little big? <laughs> it is a little big. Wow, wow, that actually, that actually fits. Sweet! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim! No, that's not what I want to do. But... <laughs> uh, All right. Um, yeah, I'm looking at myself in the camera over to the side here. This, uh... yeah, okay. <laughs> It works. Sweet, it works. Yeah, that's works awesome. Very well. <laughs> wow, because in Armorsmith it was set. It looked like it was going to be a little too big. Right. Now we do have extra here in the, in in the hairline that we have to Dremel down to get it to fit better. But Correct. but that's that's very cool. I still want to attach it to a headpiece. It, it fits, but nothing would stop it from just slipping down over my eyes. The skull cap will add another four millimeter to the hair base, but I think it's worth the effort to add it. Now we're just gonna peel it like an artichoke? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be fun putting it back together. Yeah, well, but we'll figure it out again. Yeah, the uh, blue tape actually sticks pretty good. Pretty good. Yep. The blue tape held onto the foam pretty good. It roughed up the surface a little where it stuck, and it really stuck to the contacts of it. Once all the tape was removed, I started to grind down the sharp edges, just the seams where the foam was glued together. I smoothed all the sides out, and Joe started to use a sanding drum to start to curve hair details into each piece. He was using the edge of the sanding drum and making them deeper at the base, and then as light as possible out at each point. Both of us were trying to keep the Dremel moving in the same way, with the direction of the hair. If there was any accidental cuts or scratches, they'd be harder to spot. The only hard part was dealing with the few hair pieces that were connected. Not accidentally marking the wrong piece was not easy. After all the pieces were carved and detailed, we started to paint them. Oh man, people are gonna be so weirded out that we're painting it orange yeah. at first. It'd be like, ah! and then no, or orange is great because it's covering in one go. Orange was a great base color to use under yellow. It covers better than just yellow because one coat is all that was needed. And once we started dry brushing yellow over that orange, the deeper portions of the hair texture were a darker tone, which was perfect. With all the hair spikes dry brushed, we did a dark wash of brown shoe polish over all of them. And that was pretty simple to do. Just cover a portion of the spike in polish, then wipe most of it off. The polish would stay in the grooves of the hair, getting a really good exaggerated shadow. Then another round of dry brushing yellow. Uh, this time it was more to bring the brightness of the color back. And we did more dry brushing on the tips, with very little at the base. For a final color, we dry brushed white on top of the tips and a few of the high places. We used bamboo skewers stuck in blocks of styrofoam to hold each spike as they got painted. This allowed them to dry and not stick to the paper, and that would have been a serious problem with the shoe polish. To dry brush something, you just get a little paint on the end of the brush and then wipe most of it off on a paper towel. And as you paint with the now dry brush, it'll leave a little color on the high places of your project. It easily collects in the high places and does very little to the flat areas. Fuzzy older brushes are great for dry brushing, and adding dry brushing is good for color highlights, color gradients, and it's ideal for weathering. 
Once all the paint is set, we can actually start assembling the hair. It was done just like when it was taped, but we used strips of foam instead of blue tape, which means contact cement is needed on the inside edges of each hair spike. Cement is also applied to these small strips of foam. When the cement dries, the two spikes are pressed together and the strip is wrapped around the sealed seam. Now glue won't stick very well to paint, so only the non-painted sides were actually glued. Putting the hair together took a while, and keeping track of which spikes connected to which was not easy. An elaborate system marking could help <laughs> if I was making more than one of these. I've got a couple pieces to do, and then I don't know where that one goes, if that's like the one that's that goes over here. Number nine. Number nine? But just looking at the computer to see which spike connected to which worked pretty well, for the most part. So he's supposed to come down and meet up Oh, I almost had it, now I lost it. Okay, so here he is. He's supposed to come down and meet up with that 15. That's the 15, right? Yeah, there it is. And this piece. So this should go in this hole right here. Just like that? Shouldn't it? Nope, you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So here's three in front of one. Which is where I've got it, right here. So that's three, right? Yeah, this is three. This is one. This is one with all the other pieces attached to it. It's one so. and seven, and yeah, there's seven, yeah. I suppose the lesson here is that labeling the parts of your projects from the beginning really is the best idea. I like how much the inside looks like a wasp's nest. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> You got Vegeta hair. You got Vegeta hair. Honestly. Feels like it's fitting a little low. <laughs> Do we even need the cap? You may not. <clears throat> well, if there's no cap, it should at least put a headband or something in it, maybe. Right, so that doesn't fall off your head. Kind of, yeah. Do I need the cap? No. If all I was doing was a photo shoot, this would right. be fine. If I was to walk around, I think this would probably bobble around enough. No, I think it needs a little more going on. Okay, so yeah, it fit, but I think it'll fit better with this on still. And this should hopefully get it to sit. Are you gonna need this tube down any lower? You saying I'm short? No, I can get you a stool. Joe traced the hairline onto the skull cap and I cut the inside of the hair on an angle. What I wanted was to reduce the size of the seam between the hair and the skull cap. Gluing the hair to the skull cap while it was on my head cast would also give us the right shape the first time. But we needed pieces of paper to separate the glue seams to keep them from sticking before we wanted them to. Once one side was glued down to the pencil line, we could then remove the paper and stick down the other side. And the same process was done on the back of the neck. Then I trimmed the skull cap. After this, we dremeled the edges for a better hairline and touched up any foam that was not painted. Yeah, that's more sideburns than I usually have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's finish it. Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> Most of the materials I used are available for order and have shipped right to you. I put a list and links in the description. So when we were talking about, hey, you know, what do we want to build next week? And the idea was Super Saiyan hair. I was, that sounds like a great idea. That was way more work than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it really wasn't that bad. but. There was still a lot more cutting, a lot more gluing, a lot more painting than I really had thought about going into doing something like this. So thank you, Joe. I really appreciate all of your help with getting this project completely finished. That was, you, you were very valuable for this episode, so thank you. Uh, and you know, having the pattern through a Pepper Curra file, Armorsmith, that, that, was, that was a huge help as well. For those of you who don't know, this isn't my first Dragon Ball Z build. I've got Super Saiyan hair this time. Way back in the past, I actually made a scouter um, where I've managed to say things wrong. Saiyan. 
But you know, you all let me know how I pronounced it wrong, so I'll do my best to be saying it right now. And there's one of the build where Sherby showed me how he makes Dragon Balls. So that video will also have a small link. He may be more than my Odin Makes logo in it. I'll make sure that it's easy to find all these videos if you'd like to see them. And as far as the hair, I'm really happy with it. This stays on my head very well. I could wear this in a con. I might add a, a, a small bit of uh, spirit gum or other adhesive in the front to help really hold it in place on my forehead. But I could walk around with this thing on and that's, it's really cool. And I love the sculpted look of the hair. I've always enjoyed Warhammer miniatures. I enjoy the way that the, they end up looking. So I could see this as like a dwarven beard. Or if you were to paint it like a rock, it could be huge shoulder pads. This works for me. So this idea, will be coming around again, I'm sure of it. And I'll be making it out of foam because this is how Odin makes. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make another prop from Hello, I'm Odin, and I'm gonna make another prop from Dragon Ball Z. Something new, I'm just saying. It's the Super Saiyan hair. <laughs> Yay, it lines up. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yay, it lines up. <laughs> it's going where it's supposed to be going. <laughs> uh... <laughs> and you nailed the joke. <laughs> I want to thank Jesse Mancia, Maggie Chrisman, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>